in here. But what I'm trying to help Trill do is trying to point him in the right direction because the devil has laid traps for him trying to distract him from the path. Like Islam is trapped by the devil. Uh, Judaism, in my opinion. I mean, Judaism is still on the right track because you still believe in the Old Testament. You're just like right there. You need to believe in the New Testament. Wait, right, wait. Can, then, can, I, can I ask you on that? Who, what, what's your name, brother? What, what's your name? Just uh, MC Nemesis or Nemesis or just, you know. MC. Oh, I, I've heard about you somewhere. I, I have a buddy of mine named Jay. Are you familiar with that Sacramento Truth Movement? He talked about you before, but but that's besides the point. Um, you said that we should follow the New Testament and throw away the Old Testament. Is that what you're saying? Not well, throw it away, but. Uh, the Old Testament is a history book, whereas the New Testament. Jesus but you know, the prophecies in the Old Testament that haven't happened yet, right? Yeah, but Jesus said the old thing, old things have to be cast away. Yeah, but but wait, are we going to deny the fact there's prophecies in the Old Testament? The that only thing that matters yet? to a Christian is what Jesus said. Yeah, but Jesus That's told to live by the Old Testament, though. No, he said but live by not. the Word of God. Jesus was the word so of God. When Jesus he saw the stone of a woman, he said, let he without sin cast the first stone. In other words, what did, what, uh, okay, well, what did he tell her to go do? He told her to go and not sin right. again, so he told her to go for the law. Yeah, but Jesus referenced the Old, the, the old Testament anyway. Jesus is the law. Jesus is the word. You follow Jesus. If Jesus is the word, then that, that proves it is God. That's what I'm trying to say. Christians believe Jesus is the word. And there's no evidence. Let's look at that. There's no evidence to suggest that he wasn't. There's no evidence that says he was just a man. If he was just a man, then why are Absolutely. we still talking about him 2,000 years later? Well, 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 of course, you know, say, for example, I'm not saying that Christ was just a regular average man. Of course, he had a divine spirit in him, of course. But again, it doesn't negate from the fact that I brought up about how Christ clearly taught people to live by the Old Testament. So again, whether you believe he's the most high God or not, that's irrelevant for the conversation. But even going by that, doesn't that mean that the law in the Old Testament was Jesus's law then because he's God? I gave it down in Exodus 20. Okay, just just what there. Jesus said is, is the law. Like what he said in the New Testament is what we follow what he what he said yeah but he said in matthew 5 17 to 19 think now that i came to do away with the law or the prophets i came to fulfill anybody that teaches anybody to break even the least of the law will be the least in the kingdom of heaven but people that teach to keep the law they'll be great in the kingdom of heaven so he clearly was talking about the law established before him right once you fulfill something, you accomplish it, and you move on to the next part. Can somebody grab me um, Acts three eighteen and uh, Luke twenty four verse forty four? Because what Christ accomplished, he explained that it was the things in the law and in the prophets that was concerning him. So that doesn't mean the entire Old Testament is not relevant anymore. The things he fulfilled were the things that were spoken about him. He clearly says that in the two verses I quoted. If you want to look them up in your free time. Like I said, like if you fulfill something, that means you fulfill it and move on to the next part. Well, what's the next part? Exactly. Uh, the church, what the disciples were making in the book of Acts, like you were saying. The church, how we should live, that we should take care of the widows and the orphans. And, and we do all that, the homeless and the people in jail. And, and we minister to those people and help okay. them. Is, is it possible for a Christian to sin? Yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. But if there's no law to live by today, then how can we sin? Because according to the Bible, 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, sin is a transgression of God's law. So if the law no longer is in effect, that means we can't sin anymore, right? It just means that we won't be punished for it. Won't be punished for it. So, so let, let, let me give you an example. I know a preacher. You can look this guy up on YouTube. His channel name is The Preacher. He literally teaches you can murder in Jesus' name. You can, you know, steal from other people in Jesus' name. So, so let me understand this. You're saying we can do these things and there's no punishment. 
are you saying I could rob somebody if I believe in Jesus and there's no punishment because I'm not under a law? Okay, so if I believe in Jesus and I love Jesus and Jesus is good and I want to do the right thing, why would I ever murder someone? Well, of course you wouldn't, but how do you know that's the right thing? Because you know that, that that's... It's, what, it's not in my heart to do so. But what if somebody else says it is in their heart to steal? Then they're not of Christ. I don't know them. But the way we know that's wrong is because God says in the Bible that that's wrong, right? There's but many like, people that instance, say, there's many people that say to him, Lord, Lord, and they don't know him. Is it wrong is to it worship wrong? an idol? You could agree with me on that. Right? How do we know that it's wrong to worship an idol? Because we read the law in the Bible, right? So there's an interesting video in the back, but it's quite long. If you uh, wrong in the sense that, so when you worship an idol, like say, say you want to be just like Taylor Swift and Taylor Swift is your role model. That's an idol. Right. Right. But we know that it's wrong to idolize people like that because the law in the Bible tells us not to do that, right? Yeah. Right. You know what I hate is when people call up verses and we don't actually get into the verses. So I will... Well, I mean, I, I clearly quote in multiple verses. verses just to correct you on that if you're talking about me. I'm talking about you. Yeah. Can see that, right? No, because we haven't seen the verses. You just mentioned a couple of verses. I have and no I told you to look it up. I told you you could even pull it up for me on screen if you wanted. They said Google it, bro. Yeah, well, I I'm, I'm, I haven't got time to wait. I yeah, want you, to you don't that. have to, but but again, <laughs> hey, he, he <laughs> don't know how to summarize right it. You now. have to Google it because he has no idea how to summarize his thoughts. Like, he's not <laughs> smart enough, so you have to Google it. What's the first verse you mentioned, E-T-T? I, I quoted, which by the way, I got to drop in like 10 minutes. But the first verse was Acts chapter 3, verse 18. And the second right. verse is Luke wait, wait, chapter 24. Luke, 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 Luke. All right. Chapter 3, chapter three verse 18. And the only reason I brought this up was because we talked about when Christ fulfilled it. Verse 18, yeah? Yes. All right, which uh, are you okay? Are you all right with Bible Gateway or Bible Hub? You can use whatever you want, but I use the King James Version, so you can bring up whatever all app right. you, if you can read. Version, version. You can do that. K J V. All right, King James Version, right. Jeds, can you share my screen, please? Hey Randy, would you ever have the balls to call yourself an Iman? Or just a reverend? <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. If you all want to read it, you can because I already quoted the verse. All right, for well, those things which God before had sued by the mouth of all his prophets, the Christ should suffer. He hath so fulfilled. Right. So I brought this up in response when the brother mentioned about, you know, Christ fulfilled those things. So I'll simply mention here. But what did he fulfill? That just because he says he fulfilled it, it doesn't mean we don't have to keep the law. Because right here it explains the things he fulfilled was a thing that was spoken about that he would be, you know, he'd come in the future and fulfill those things. So that's what he fulfilled. And then the other verse I mentioned, Luke chapter 24, verse 44, it reiterates this. Thing. Hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. Don't go too fast. I've got to type this in. <laughs> Luke 44. Chapter, chapter 24, verse 44. Okay. Chapter 24. 44. How okay. often do you guys do these live streams? Is it every once in a while? Or we uh, Monday to Friday in the afternoon and evening GMT. And he said oh, unto them, to them, let me read it. And, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled 
which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalm concerning me. Right. So that's right. what was fulfilled was all the things in the law and in the prophets that was concerning him. So that doesn't mean we don't have to live by the laws in the Old Testament because it simply explains the things he fulfilled was the things that were speaking about him, like how he would be born in the future and how he die for the sins of Israel. Say, for instance, Isaiah 7, 14, um, Isaiah um, 53, we all know that. Right, so that's clearly an example of the things that Christ fulfilled there. So, so do you, do you have a, a Christian brother? You have a counteract re argument to that, or, or what do you think about those precepts? Yes. So he said that those things could exist, but basically nobody would be able to carry them out. So, he, he judge not needs to be judged. For example, if you start judging people, then you're going to be judged. So you can't judge. So is Jesus um, going to judge anybody? Hold on. I don't so, think you know what the word fulfillment means. Okay, so no judging. Secondly, he doesn't know what fulfillment means. He who is without sin cast the first stone. Wait, wait. Let me explain to him what these Bible. words mean. Let me give you a breakdown. You can, you can do that. You can, you can do that. Let me just, give you a short her, breakdown. Fulfillment. Whenever you fill up a cup, it is in the metaphorical and the literal sense, spiritual and metaphysical. Therefore, Christ fulfilled the spirits of the prophet, and he has fulfilled the law of Moses. Are you going to leave yeah. Okay, now that we have reached fulfillment, that fulfillment means salvation. That's what it means. Okay, now real quick. Now, now the, the, the lady, she said, because uh, I couldn't hear because someone else was speaking, did she say that Christ doesn't judge anybody? J just so she could repeat that so I don't mis misunderstand her. No. Christ told you that you can't judge. But is, is Christ going to judge people, though? Of course. Okay, it, but it's wrong for humans to judge people, though, right? Exactly. Judge not least. So be what, why do you think? Why do you think in Matthew nineteen, if you start at say, I believe it's twenty seven on down, but Matthew nineteen, Christ told the apostles that in the kingdom they're going to sit on the throne and they're going to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. So yeah, exactly. Matthew nineteen, right? what verse, brother? Um, I believe it's twenty seven on down. But on on beside him. Hey, before we move on to a different verse, I thought we was on this previous verse. Like, do you understand what fulfillment means? I understand what I perceive it to means, but I heard your side of the argument. No, there's no perceiving. There's facts and logic and there's truth. And do you understand the truth that I presented to you? I mean, I no. disagree with your uh, standpoint on okay, it. Okay, so I, you disagree with angry. facts, and you disagree with the, what the word actually means. Well, I, agree with with that. Okay. I mean, I could, I could say the I same agree. against you, though, so, so we wouldn't get anywhere. Absolutely just, not, because I give you the definition of fulfillment. Not only that, I put it in an example in a word. You did not. You yeah. failed to do this. Therefore, you believe in a lie or whatever you believe in, and I believe in the absolute truth. And well, I'm trying to see things as they are. No one is going to tell you not to believe in what you want to believe in. But that verse, all it's all it's implying is that Jesus was perfect, that he managed to fulfill everything, and he lived his life according to the laws. It doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. We should strive to be perfect because we're all born sinners. You should know that. Well, what, did, what, what did? Yeah, I don't deny that. Of course, we all went astray from the from the womb, as the scriptures say. But as a believer, you'd agree that Christ told us to live by the law. Would you disagree with that? Just a yes or no. Um, yeah, he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Right. Well, what do you think about John 14, 15? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And you guys believe yeah. that Jesus is God, right? Yeah, so you have to keep the commandments of, of Jesus. Yeah, Yeah, but, but Jesus is God, right? So the Okay, Lord what are his, com what do you think that his commandments are is my question. Well, the Ten Commandments. Oh, well, uh, the there, Ten Commandments? Says, no, that, that, that's not what I'm saying. I believe you have to live by all the laws in the Bible to the best of your ability. However, let me let me finish real quick. We are under grace, so that means if you do mess up, you can be forgiven. But you can't. Okay, so you're asking how to live. Okay, I can tell you how to live. Okay, how you live is you believe in Jesus, 
And when you have a problem, and it says in the Bible, if you have a problem or in the storm or in fair weather, trust in God, the Lord, the Savior. Believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead on the third day, and you'll be saved. When did I disagree with that, though? No, you're you're saying how we should live. I'm telling you, this is how we should live. So you're asking me, okay, so now how do we become sanctified? Uh, you know, that's a question, you know. How do we become sanctified? You study the word, you embrace it. But if you come at the word through a secular sense, you'll never understand it. So unless you believe, you cannot okay, understand okay. it. Okay, let, let's say this. You what can't understand it. Like everything that you say, if you don't believe in Jesus, you'll never understand the Bible. Okay. D just so I understand, when Jesus returns, when he looks at who he's going to save, what's he going to look at? Is he going to look at their faith or their, their works or what's he going to look at? Okay, can so you explain that, that again? I'll explain it when but Jesus returns, what is he going to look at in, in a believer? Is he going to look at their faith alone, or is he going to look at their works with that, or what's he going to look at? Their actions and their words and their deeds and everything, and whether they were faithful, and whether they believed in him in adversity. All of it. All, the whole thing. So it's not only by faith, then. You could agree with me on that? No, it uh, is just by faith alone. Well, what do you think well, about Revelation well, chapter 22, well, verse 20? When it said, I'm coming well, back, I'm well, going to reward well, every man according to his works. What's your thoughts on that? Last page the, of the, the works that you do. So, so when you become a Christian, hang on, the works hang on, that you do are the hang Christians. On, can I just pull that up, please? What verse were you talking about then? The, the last page of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Oh, and if you can as well, when you read that, please read verse 14 as well because it backs that up. Now, the, the, only thing, the only reason I went here is I want to demonstrate that if Christ returns, you're going to be judged off of your words in your faith. Verse it's, it's in Revelation, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to verse 14. So you do know that Revelation is in the Quran. You said what? I said you do know the Quran and Revelation is match up. I mean, I have behold, and let me read it. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Right, so he's coming back and he's going to judge every man according to their works. So I simply brought this up to show that Christ has taken your actions and how you live into account. And he's going to, uh, that's going to also determine if you're going to be saved or not in the end because you're going to be judged off of how you work. I'll give you another example. You don't have to pull this up before the audience if they'd like to read it. Everybody knows Matthew that. Chapter 25, verse 31, read on down the rest of the chapter. There's two groups of believers. The one group, they believe they had works to show their faith. The other group believed but didn't have any works. Christ rejected the one group. So that also goes to show that, um, bear for me a second, it also goes to show that Christ is taking account of your works. So you can't just go around and do what you want. You have okay, so according to what you, so what are the works that you think that we should do? Well, it's, it's very simple. The, the Bible, say for instance, what, what is considered to be good work? It would be good work by treating other people you want to be treated and by following what God wants you to live by. Like his, his rules. Well, how do you know what God wants you to live by? Because we read the Bible and see his commandments. Right? Right. You still there? Right, but Jesus said that he fulfilled the commandments. Where did he say he fulfilled the commandments? He said he fulfilled all the things in the law and the prophets concerning him. So yes. it was a concerning him. That but Jesus is God, so everything concerns well, him. Well, I, I, I don't agree that Jesus Christ is the most high God. I disagree with you on that. He's the son of God, absolutely, but he's not God himself. But that's an entirely but, different. But to me, I, the, the, that believes he's God himself, it makes sense to me. It don't make sense to you, of course. But, but, here, but here, here's the thing, though, because you're misrepresenting me. I used to believe that because I was raised in the Catholic Church and the Saturday Adventist Church. So I used to believe that eight years ago, but then I studied. I actually, Which unlike other Christians, I actually picked up the Bible and read it, and I came yeah. to a different understanding. Well, let's not talk about what 
I believe. Let's talk about what you believe for a little bit. Um, uh, sure. You know, Bible aside, so you're just a human living on this planet. So to you, there's no afterlife. I, I didn't say there's no afterlife. Of course, I believe there's a kingdom of heaven, but I don't believe people go there right when they die. The Bible teaches and you go into a state of unconscious. Don't, don't reference any. You said you don't believe in the scriptures, so you can't. Well, don't when, reference when any of them. When, when did I say that? That? You said you don't believe in the You said you don't believe that Jesus is he God, so you're not that. a Christian. He never said that. He said he is a Christian. You can't, you no, you have to believe in Jesus that He's the Lord and Savior to be a Christian. Now, okay, can, can, I, can I answer that real quick? Here, here's the thing here's what you have to understand. I said Jesus is not the supreme God. However, when you read the Bible, there's instances where it calls humans gods. Uh, if you go to Psalms chapter 82, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, the sons of the Most High. So it depends on the context. Of course, that doesn't mean humans are gods and the concept of the supreme god that created the world so is christ a god technically but he's not the supreme god that's if what, you don't believe point. that christ is the only not only the supreme but the only one he's the only one just one god jesus that's it does the Bible? If you don't believe you? that, you are not a Christian. You okay. are. Here, here, here's the, here's whatever the you make up in your own head. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. Here's a spiritual knockout. Does the Bible call Satan a god? Knockout. You, we all no. going to Bible call Satan a god, right? So does that mean? No. That, what's that mean? All right. So there's the so uppercase the G and the lowercase G. The G, as in God, goddesses, is used to refer to the. They're like the little G, and he is referred right, to as right. a little G, just like we were. You right, are right. God, but it, but it calls him it calls him a god, though, right? You, we we can at least have the decency to agree. It calls him that, even though he's clearly not on the supreme level of the Most High God. We can agree on that, right? All right okay, so Satan uh, was perfect until there was iniquity found. Well, well, where, where does it where does it say that in the Bible? That's another thing we'll disagree on because I don't believe Satan was kicked out of heaven as a glorious angel. I, I don't find that in the Bible, but that, that's a different conversation. The Bible says that Satan is under God's authority. So in John 20, 27 to 29, then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand in my side. Do not disbelieve. Believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? In other words, he saw God. Right. Now, now, once again, Jesus is a God, but he's not the supreme God. So that, that's where we're disagreeing. As I've proven, Satan is a God, and the Bible also calls men gods. But obviously, they have different contexts. But like, say, for instance, right, I quoted you guys a verse, Psalms 82, verse 6. It says, ye are gods, the sons of the Most High. So obviously, we can, agree, we can agree that the Bible calls other things other than the supreme God, God. But obviously, we can agree that that doesn't mean they're on the level of the supreme God, right? right. Philippines 2, 5 to 7, have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus. We thought he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, take the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So in other words, that's God. Okay, now now before I drop it, because I, I gotta get going in a couple minutes, but before I drop, the brother mentioned that Satan, like he fell from heaven and, and all that. Could you just tell me a little bit about that before I drop in five minutes? 